What is the best location to put your trail cameras for summer? We asked Bo Martonic, who hunts the public land big woods of Pennsylvania primarily. We asked Terry Peer, who hunts Kentucky and Illinois. And we talked to Jeff Sturgis, who hunts Wisconsin and Minnesota. So a lot of different perspective in this video, all from great hunters. We hope you guys enjoy this video. Hit that like button and subscribe and leave in the comments when you typically mass deploy your cameras for the summer. Let's get right into it. Here we go. So Bo, what is, uh, what's your best or favorite summer? time trail camera locations all right so summertime trail camera locations in areas that allow minerals i think mineral sites are hard to beat uh for getting trail camera inventory if i can run mineral sites i'll run those in areas and and to just try to get try to figure out what potentially would be in that area and in in the big woods i've found mineral sites will pull deer from miles and miles away in those areas again where you're allowed to to run them but there's a lot of areas that i'm at where i can't and in that situation i like to run them on community scrapes not really just your traditional community scrapes they have to be in a specific location and traditionally around some sort of food and water and where i've found the, the specific location of those is like an ideal setup for me would be a clear cut either a brand new one that has some fresh grasses that are coming up so you know in that one to three year old range but probably the best are the ones in that three to eight year old range that have the brows there. They've got, they've got a bunch of food and there's traditionally some water that's kind of running and there's water in most places. So I don't really, I, I used to try to look at creek bottoms um, from that standpoint, but if they don't have the food, even in the summertime, they're not, even when it's really hot, you're not going to get the production you do out of the ones around some of those, uh, those food sources. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That strategy, as far as, you know, gathering, uh, general inventory purposes, because in most states of the Midwest, and with a few exceptions, um, you know, you can't hunt these whitetails on their summer, you know, bed to food pattern. You know, most, most of us are opening up somewhere around October 1st, maybe the later portion of September, but that shift is starting to, you know, bachelor yeah. groups are break, breaking up and things are starting to change a little bit in the whitetail woods. Yeah. And it, it, it's really, it's, it's funny. I've run cameras for, I've uh, folders on my computer back to about 2008 of summertime trail camera photos. And there's some spots that are really good. Like there's some spots that I'll find that will pull deer and they hang out in that area for a long time. But then that buck will end up getting killed four miles away. And they just, you know, the, there's those summertime hot spots that I use for the inventory, but I don't really, I don't take that information as in, oh, these bucks are right here. All I know is that they're somewhere in the vicinity. And now that's where I got to do different work to be able to figure out where they're going to be during the, the hunting season. I think it, the answer is it depends. And I'll explain that if I'm using trail cameras in Kentucky, which is a bait state, and I'm a firm believer in supplemental feeding. I think there's a difference between supplemental feeding and baiting, by the way, but that's a different story for a different day. If I'm in Kentucky and I have my mineral out and I have my supplemental feed out, at that point in time, there's not a lot we can do with antler development. You know, I'm putting them out July 4th time frame in there. I really don't care before that because the antler is not big enough that I can even see. I'm just burning battery data plans, you know, putting more intrusion going in. Usually July 4th, you can at least see the frame structure of the antlers and know what you're getting. Uh, so in Kentucky, it's a little bit different because I have to go in there and fill that feeder. I have to go in there and replenish that mineral. Um, so I'm putting obviously cameras on there to get my inventory. Um, I think for everybody, Velvet Fest is this time of the year is simply about inventory. What made it through that we don't know about? What is here? But in Kentucky, I'm on feed and mineral. I mean, that's the easiest place to get them. Even if it's nighttime, that's okay. I think when you're when you're focusing on summer bachelor groups, even if it's nighttime pictures, all you need to know, know is whether he's there or not. So in Kentucky, it's a little bit different for me. Trail cameras over food, mineral, identify the bachelor group. I do like putting cameras on transitions of corn and alfalfa. Um, I, I, I work really hard on my properties to create height variations in my crop rotation. So like I'll have beans to clover or I'll have corn to beans or corn to alfalfa to where there's literally a wall or height variation. It doesn't, it, it can even be beans to clover, you know, it doesn't have to be up high, but the, the deer funnel that edge. So if you're laying out a food plot, you know, you can strategically make angles or different things with that, that edge to where they'll follow that. I love putting cameras up high pointing on those because you'll get a lot of traffic back and forth and then identifying, um, 
you know, as we get closer to September 1st, where are those bucks coming out of? Where are they bedding? Usually it's very, very close to bedding. They don't bed very far away from where they're eating um, in late August and early September. So in Illinois, uh, where we hunt, there's no supplemental feeding, no mineral. So we're identifying um, if we're in big ag country, most of the times uh, the maternal aggression of the does will keep the best habitat for the does and the fawns. The bucks go out into open ag country. You know, that's why you see all these guys driving around Illinois, open ag country with binoculars and spotting scopes on their windows because they're looking out over these four or 500 acre bean fields and seeing the, you know, top foot of the, the deer's neck you know, sticking up over it, you know, you're looking for those bachelor groups. You're looking to identify a, a giant basically is, is, you know, do I have a booner setting out there? And once I know where that bachelor group is from there, you kind of spread your trail cameras out in different directions. If you can get access to figure out where is he going to do a fall range at, but at least, you know, one's there. Otherwise you're throwing blind darts. What is your summer trail camera strategy? Um, and let's just, for this one, let's kind of hone in and use the properties nearby, mm -hmm. um, just as kind of an example on what you're doing with trail cameras on those properties during the summer or what are you expecting as well? Yeah. And, and especially what am I expecting? It, because let's face it, if, if, you know, I like to get pictures, um, but we can drive around from the truck and use, you know, a, a good lens and a good camera to take some pictures while, while, while deer out in the fields, um, the trail camera photos, if, if I wasn't getting something, with the trail cameras um, during the summer to help me during the fall or help me manage a herd, then why use them other than some pretty pictures? And so the trail cameras during the summer are very important to me. Um, and there's a few ways that I look at it like you can use it. And I'll, I'll try to remember the list in my head and <laughs> see if I can <laughs> um, uh, deliver that. But, um, you know, one of the things I find very interesting is, is people's expectations of trail cameras during the summer. And I've gone through this and I've gone through this with my clients. You have those traditional scrapes and locations in the woods, especially in heavy cover where you're getting great trail cam photos every single year. And those are not some of the areas typically that you're going to get great trail cameras, great trail camera pictures during the summertime. And so if you're putting it out in your, in your really great money spots that are fall located spots and you're putting those out in the summer, you might find that, there's not a lot of pictures and you're going to experience some disappointment and that's not a bad thing. And as it relates to where those bucks are during the summertime, then my tra trail cameras, typically I'm seeing 10, 15% of the mature bucks that I'm going to really focus on during the fall, during the summer months, uh, maybe 20% at most. And that's a good thing because if I have great summer habitat and I have a small parcel, I don't have great fall habitat. And so, there's a few complexities of that. If you're, if I'm looking for, I'm really looking using the summer to identify mature bucks that are still alive. And some of those I might even had pictures of in January after the season, but I want to make sure they made it through the winter and I'm using my trail camera to specifically locate those bucks. A large percentage of the mature bucks that I've had on my property during the summertime. And again, we're going to one or two mature bucks as opposed to, the, opposed to the six to 10 that might be there during the hunting season are not bucks that are there in late September and October. They're bucks that leave and they're someone else's core buck. So often those bucks that I'm watching here in the summertime, I get to know they're alive and I'm really watching for them to leave. And when they do, I'm expecting them to come back during the uh, peak of the rut. So I know where they're at. I know where their movements are and the presence of those bucks during the summertime are telling me that there's probably a good chance they're going to leave for one. And, and hopefully I'm gaining three to four more times than I lose. Um, once the whitetail shift and buck shift in mid September, um, you know, to mid October, but those are great bucks that I have an opportunity at as non core bucks to shoot those bucks uh, during the peak of the rut. That's a good answer. What are some of the locations you're putting your cameras? Um, are they over the water holes? Um, more edge habitat. So if I think a, a mature buck is using a big, thick area during the summertime or, or during the fall, that's probably not where I'm going to put that camera during the summer because he can't crash his velvet through that high stem count cover and thick area. So I'm putting it on the edge of fields. 
uh, mock scrapes on the edge of fields, uh, the edge of food plots. My, my food plots are bare typically during the summer. I'm planting them in August 1st. I'm looking for adjacent areas where bucks are going out into ag land and putting them on those crossings, those fence crossings. So a lot of areas that I wouldn't put a camera on during the fall, I'm putting them on during the summer, more outside of cover, more on the edge cover. And, uh, and so that's where I'm hoping to capture those, those. And so I'm really looking at as identification. That's the main, the main focus of those summer trail cameras. Now, another big use of those uh, summer trail cameras is I'm always practicing my weather hunting tap tactics. You know, what days are the best days to hunt by the weather? The summertime is absolutely no different as it relates to the factors that you hunt in the fall that are indicated by the weather that you would see uh, buck movement during the summertime. So it's a great time to practice. You can, mm -hmm. you know, look at uh, the weather coming up in the next 10 days and you can say, you know what, I bet you're going to be moving on this date because of these factors. You verify that with your trail cam cards when you pull. And you can either just look at your cards and look back when they moved and see what those weather factors are. I know on the extra trail cameras, we have the temperature on there so we can at least see uh, what the temperature was. But I'm really confirming those weather um, events that take place that push deer movement and those same events are gonna push movement during the fall too. So it's a great time to practice uh, those movements. And it could be that you just have small bucks around that you have does that you it just any deer in general, you can use the trail cameras to say, yep, that was a 17 degree temperature drop. We didn't have pictures the day before because it was windy and rainy. And the day before that it was 92 and you're out there at 74 degrees or whatever it is. And you're, um, and you're seeing a lot of buck movement on that day because of the cooler weather. That's a good point. I think perfecting that weather formula, if you're trying to do that mid season or you start paying attention to the weather second week, of October, it's going to be a lot easier if you were paying attention the entire summer and uh, applying that theory throughout the summer. Oh, definitely. And we, and we, I travel the summer, um, we're out in the fields, traveling the back roads, finding our bucks. Um, cause they might be a mile and a quarter away and a mile, a mile away in someone else's field and they're there all summer. And so we're, we're locating bucks there and we're locating them. I'm not going out and watching those fields when it's 92 in the evening and humid. I'm yeah. going there when a cold front went through and, those are the only times I'm bothering to go out and look for deer. Now we just go out for a cruise and just, you know, for relaxation. That's one thing. But when I'm specifically, I know that this buck is growing up in this area. I'm going to go look for him and find him. And it's going to be on those cool evenings. And, and I'm watching the same with my trail cameras. 